Thank you. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of our team, I want to thank you for your time. My name is Natalia Djokic, and my teammates are Miro Ljubtomic, Yasmina Stevic, and Dunja Djokic. And with the guidance of our mentor and Professor Ming Chung, we did a study in intelligent traffic signal control based on reinforcement learning. As some of the most popular cities in today's world continue to grow, they will need to either expand their existing road networks or improve road infrastructure to accommodate more traffic. One of the most effective ways to elevate congestions and allow more road users is intelligent traffic light control. Constant phase control implementations may be effective enough when configured correctly for the given environment, but they're rarely optimal. More modern implementations may incorporate the use of physical actuators, such as weight sounders. However, the addition of these physical installations would be time-consuming, expensive, and would not be able to dynamically adapt to changing environments or traffic situations. With this paper, we want to show how to decide the traffic signal spaces based on the collected data from different sensors and vehicle networks. We have used a reinforcement learning model to control the traffic light. In the model, we quantify the complex traffic scenario as states by collecting data and dividing the whole intersection into several routes. In this paper, we have used SAML, Traffic Control Interface, e-learning, and Python. We evaluate our model via simulation in the simulation of urban mobility in a vehicle or network, and the simulation results show the efficiency of our model in controlling traffic lights. SAML is an open source, microscopic, multimodal traffic simulation. It allows simulating how a given traffic demand, which consists of single vehicles, move through a given road network. The simulation allows us to address a large set of traffic management topics. Each vehicle is modeled explicitly, has its own route, and moves individually through the network. Simulations are deterministic by default, but there are various options for introducing randomness. Now we will talk a little about Q-learning. Q-learning is a model-free uh, reinforcement learning algorithm. The goal of Q-learning is to learn a policy which tells an agent what action to take under what circumstances. It doesn't require a model, hence the connotation model-free of the environment. And uh, it can handle problems with stochastic uh, transition and rewards without uh, requiring uh, adaptations, which, uh, which is especially important for our paper. Q names uh, the function uh, that returns the reward used to provide the reinforcements and can uh, be said to stand for the quality of an action taken in a given state. A good way to approach a solution is using the uh, simple Q-learning algorithm, which uh, gives our agent a memory uh, in the form of a Q-table. In this table of size state uh, multiple actions, we store a well, uh, value for each state action combination. Those values estimate the reward we get by taking that action and are called Q-values. Higher Q values imply better chance of getting uh, gra uh, greater rewards. Now uh, you can see um, basic steps for Q learning. Uh, first step is to select an action A and execute it. Uh, then uh, receive immediate reward R, which can be negative, zero, or positive. Uh, observe the new new state S, update the estimate Q, and uh, update the um, uh, state uh, at the end, and repeat these steps um, in, uh, indefinitely. Uh, in our paper, we have used uh, eight lines, which are divide in, uh, divided in four pair of roots. Uh, we chose pair of routes um, in uh, that way that cars don't collide. Uh, turning, off, uh, uh, turning off the green uh, light in each route represents uh, a different action. We have decided uh, that uh, the duration of green and uh, red uh, lights lasts uh, 15 seconds each, which between green and red light uh, is followed 
by yellow light, which is always three seconds long. In order to detect the cars in each lane, we have used detectors that are uh, 50 meters long and represent simulation of cameras in real life. We can see them as blue lines on our picture. We have four possible actions based on our intersections. Uh, intersection, as um, you can see on this picture. In 90% uh, of uh, samples, we choose uh, the, ac the action that uh, has the maximum value in Q table. And in 10%, we randomly choose action. Uh, that, uh, that way, we give them a chance to be chosen even uh, though they don't uh, have the maximum value. Calculating the reward was one of the most important parts of our project for implementing Q-learning. In order to do that, we used a ratio between number of cars past intersection during one green light and the number of cars that were in the lanes before taking action. Finally, the reward is calculated as subtraction between evaluation of current step and evaluation of previous step. Our detectors can detect nine cars in one lane, but in order to reduce the number of states, we decided to divide the number of cars in intervals. There are three intervals. First interval is when the lane is empty. The second interval, the second interval is when the number of car in a lane is between one and three. And the last inter interval is when the number of cars in the lane is four or more than four. Because all lanes are in pairs, in this table, you can see how we got pair substate from intervals. Pair substate sub represents the substate of one pair defined by table above. And a pair substate can have values from zero to five, and there are four different root pairs. The final, sub, uh, final state is calculated with uh, this equation. Here we will uh, show you a little example for you to understand better. Colored rectangles represent the pairs of planes. As you can see in purple lanes, in one lane we have just one car and in second lane we do not have cars. To define in which interval those, number, uh, those numbers are, we need to use I function from first quartile. Then we use table from a previous slide to define substate from intervals. In the end, we calculated the final state by combining all substate in this equation. Since driving is unpredictable, our system has to learn all the time. We decided to use reverse learning for faster table updating. In order to do that, we divided time in episodes and each episode contains 10 chunks. As you can see in this diagram, one chunk contains details about previous state, action, reward, and current state. In Q table, we store Q values. At the beginning, we set them all to zero. This is how table looks like after some learning. Maximum values in each row are shown blue. This video represents our results. As you can see here, traffic lights turn green to those routes where we have the biggest number of cars. Why not round robin? Here you can see that traffic lights turn green even though there is no cars in the lanes. As you can see, this algorithm leads to traffic trends. This is how our system works in the same situation. It is clear how better this is now. These are some results and analysis. As you can see here, uh, this is average waiting time in seconds for different types of traffic light control. Uh, random method is shown as red, uh, Robin round is shown uh, green, and our method is shown with blue color. As you can see here, our method has the lowest average waiting time. In the end, we would like to show some strengths and some weaknesses of our system. 
uh, some advantage is that it is given to routes with more traffic, generic solution for different types of intersections, and automatically adjust to traffic density changes. Some weaknesses are that uh, it, we have constant duration of green light and starvation problem. Those weaknesses could be removed by improvement of system in the future. Thank you for your attention.